Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Breaking news out of Southern California. Spread this everywhere. Officials in California's Orange County have voted to fight the state's sanctuary city laws and join in on President Trump's lawsuit against California's decision to protect illegal aliens and block the efforts of ICE. This comes on the heels of the Orange County Sheriff's Department's announcement that it will provide public information on when inmates are released from jail. Fox News reports that the Orange County Board of Supervisors voted 3 0 to join the U.S. Justice Department's lawsuit which argued three recent California laws deliberately interfered with federal immigration policies. One of the laws bars police in many cases from turning over suspects to federal immigration agents for deportation. This legislation prevents law enforcement from removing criminals from our community and is a threat to public safety, Supervisor Sean Nelson said before the vote. The county moved earlier this week to improve communication with federal immigration agents by publishing the release dates of inmates online. The Sheriff's Department used to screen inmates in the county's jails to help Immigration and Customs Enforcement ICE, agents identify those subject to deportation but had to stop after the state law passed. The Orange County Sheriff's Department whose leadership opposes the new California sanctuary law that limits cooperation with federal immigration officials, announced Monday that it is now providing public information on when inmates are released from custody. As of Monday, March 26, an existing Who's in Jail online database includes the date and time of inmates' release, a move agency officials say will enhance communication with its law enforcement partners. This is in response to SB 54 limiting our ability to communicate with federal authorities and our concern that criminals are being released to the street when there's another avenue to safeguard the community by handing them over, to ICE for potential deportation, Orange County Under Sheriff Don Barnes said. Orange County and the cities of Aliso Viejo and Buena Park to consider adopting similar measures against California's sanctuary law due to Los Alamitos making a stand against Jerry Brown and his band of lunatics. Los Alamitos' new ordinance claims the new state law placed by Jerry Brown in January, is in direct conflict with the federal law and the Constitution. Therefore, the Council finds that it is impossible to honor our oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America, unless we opt out of the law that violates federal law and the Constitution. RWT Meanwhile, California Attorney General Xavier Becerra would not rule out taking action of his own against officials who fight the laws, including the sheriff, Fox News reports. State law is state law. It's my job to enforce state law and I will do so. We want to make sure that every jurisdiction, including Orange County, understands what state law requires of the people and the subdivisions of the state of California," Becerra said at a news conference. When asked if that meant an arrest or lawsuit against the sheriff, Becerra responded, I think I just answered that. Orange County Under Sheriff Don Barnes told Fox News in an interview that Becerra's comments were threatening, but the sheriff's office was not doing anything that the law did not allow. My hope would be that he would read the language of the law that was passed, he said on Hannity. It very clearly says in there what we can and cannot do. Barnes added that the law has put Californians at risk by returning dangerous individuals back into the communities and that by making this information public. The sheriff's office was trying to help the community be safer. They're very serious crimes and they're being returned back into the community, and quite honestly back into the communities in which they preyed upon and committed their crimes to begin with. That's great news. Let's hope that more departments do the same. Hashtag Blue Lives Matter. God bless. Breaking news from President Trump on the Second Amendment President Donald Trump denounced a New York Times op-ed by former Supreme Court Justice John Paul Stevens, vowing that he would defend the Second Amendment, Breitbart reports.
the Second Amendment will never be repealed. He wrote on Twitter in all caps. As much as Democrats would like to see this happen, and despite the words yesterday of former Supreme Court Justice Stevens, no way. The New York Times has to be the most uneducated and lefty propaganda machine on the Internet, hence why President Trump tweeted his response to John Stevens. Rarely in my lifetime have I seen the type of civic engagement school children and their supporters demonstrated in Washington and other major cities throughout the country this past Saturday. These demonstrations demand our respect. They reveal the board public support for legislation to minimize the risk of mass killings of school children and others in our society. Concern that a national standing army might pose a threat to the security of the separate states led to the adoption of that amendment which provides that a well-regulated militia, being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms, shall not be infringed. Today that concern is a relic of the 18th century. District of Columbia v. Heller, that there was an individual right to bear arms. Overturning that decision via a constitutional amendment to get rid of the Second Amendment would be simple and would do more to weaken the NRA's ability to stymie legislative debate and block constructive gun control legislation than any other available option. New York Times report. Mr. Stevens, just because you are a coward and one of Hillary's little Nazi propaganda machines, does not forgive you for being a complete dumbass. The Second Amendment of the United States Constitution reads, A well-regulated militia, being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms, shall not be infringed. The Second Amendment protects an individual right that existed before the creation of any government. The Declaration of Independence made clear that all human beings are endowed with certain unalienable rights, and that governments are created to protect those rights the unalienable right to freedom from violent harm, and the right to self-defense, both exist before and outside of secular government. The language of the Second Amendment prohibits the federal government from infringing on this right of the people. There is nothing ambiguous about shall not be infringed. The Second Amendment refers to a well-regulated militia. The right of the people to form citizen militias is an unalienable right of, we the people. Americans have the right and advantage of being armed, unlike the citizens of other countries whose governments are afraid to trust the people with arms. James Madison The Constitution shall never be construed, to prevent the people of the United States who are peaceable citizens from keeping their own arms. Samuel Adams The lefts are nothing but victims and cowards and they are feverishly attempting to abolish the Second Amendment and ban firearms in the United States. These ignorant fools would have only the criminals be armed, the police and the military. Law enforcement is reactionary, they arrive on scene only after a crime has been committed and it takes an average of six minutes from the time a person calls 911 for help. The same pathetic anti-America gut maggots also would have all of us be walking victims where only the bad guys have a firearm, think on that. A bad person that has the intent on carrying out evil? will do and pick whatever tool they want. How these fools never see that, is beyond me. We are far from a victory against those who desire to abolish our freedoms, they know they cannot win this in court, so they are turning to private industry and banking. We have reported on Kroger's, Walmart, Dick's Sporting Goods as well as Citicorp all changing their policies to fit the anti-firearm lunatics agendas. Citigroup, the fourth largest bank in the United States has announced it will no longer do business with clients that do not meet a host of progressive gun control requirements, none of which are mandated by federal law. Under this new policy, we will require new retail sector clients or partners to adhere to these best practices. 1. They don't sell firearms to someone who hasn't passed a background check. 2. They restrict the sale of firearms for individuals under 21 years of age. And, 3. They don't sell bump stocks or high-capacity magazines. This policy will apply across the firm, including to small business, commercial and institutional clients, as well as credit card partners, whether co-brand or private label. It doesn't impact the ability of consumers to use their city cards at merchants of their choice. YouTube is entering the gun control debate with a new ban on videos which demo firearms or link to websites selling firearms or firearm accessories.
RWT News. United we stand, divided we fall. Chris Badger Thomas is a veteran who served our country as an Army combat medic. Together we will make America great again.